Okay, here's the lesson for the multiplication of integers notes if you missed class that day or if you just enrolled. Um, so I'll go through the first and the back page. The essential question for this lesson is how can multiplying integers be used to represent real life? So if we're looking here, we're going to start off with our vocabulary. Um, situations in real life, when we want to represent values derived from, and we would say here, repeated, I'm going to fill in that blank with repeated groups of equal amounts. So anytime we're having a group of equal amounts, then we're going to be using multiplication. Okay? So that's what multiplication is. It's uh, repeated groups of equal amounts. So you can think about any group in real life that have five groups of three objects each. And so we're going to talk about a five circle of friends. So go ahead and draw in five circles there. Three, four, and five. And then in each of those circles you're going to put three friends. So one, two, three, one, two, three. So again, you got five circles. And you got to ask yourself, do I have groups? Well, yes, I have a group of friends. Are those groups being repeated? Yes, they're being repeated five times. Do they have equal amounts? They have three friends in each of those circle groups. Um, so how many objects would that be? Now, simply, we can just count them, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15. So we have a total of 15 objects. So that's where we get 5 times 3 from. Now, you definitely don't want to count that, especially when the numbers get into the 100s. Um, so hence we came up with the multiplication table. But if you're trying to look for stories that represent multiplication, you're looking for groups that are being repeated and they have equal amounts in each of those groups. Okay, this next sec section here is um, to kind of help us understand what things in real life can be determined or um, considered to be groups. So it says here, when it comes to real life, these blank can be formed in a number of ways. Okay, so these groups can be formed in a number of ways. And then in class, we ask students to identify examples of different groupings. Um, so things they came up with, uh, the group would be the class, and then we ask what object would be in that group. And sometimes, some people say students would be objects in that group. Um, you also could have desks inside of a class. So anything that you can think of that's a group, and then you have objects inside of that, um, those would be represented as, or we can consider those groupings and then we would represent that with multiplication in math. Okay, so let's look at our first example to kind of get an understanding of the concepts here. So when it comes to money, um, because everyone's going to have to deal with money, that's usually the example that I go with. So when it comes to money, you actually can represent these groups and we're going to represent these groups in the form of what we'll call accounts. Okay? So accounts is, uh, those are going to be the things that are holding our particular objects. And our two objects, you can either have money in your accounts or you can have accounts with debt. Okay? So the accounts with money obviously is a positive thing and the accounts with debt, that's going to be representing your negative numbers. So, the example, imagine you have four credit cards, okay, so we have four credit card accounts with five dollars of debt each. So, if we're going to make sure we're not using addition, we've got to ask ourselves, are we giving anything? Well, no, we're not giving, so it's not addition. Subtraction is represented by removal, we're not removing anything. So we have to ask ourselves, do we have groups? Well, we have groups here in the form of accounts. They are being repeated four times, so there's four groups. And then they have $5 of debt each, so they have equal amounts in those groups. So we can represent that using multiplication. So then we ask ourselves these questions. Would you end up owing money or having money in this situation? So if I got four accounts 
and they all owe money or they owe five dollars each, um, do I end up owing money altogether or do I have money? Well, in this case, because it's four counts of debt, I owe money. So go ahead and write in you owe money. Okay? So then your balance, is it going to be negative or positive? Well, we know if we have a bunch of debt, that is going to be a negative thing for us. Okay? So then fill that in with negative. I am writing with my finger, hence it is much sloppier than when we do it in class. Alright? So then you ask yourself, what's your ending ending balance? So to imagine our ending balance, we want to look at our credit card account. So let me um, make some fake credit cards here. So one, two, three, and there's four accounts, right? MasterCard, Visa, right? Uh, IKEA card, and Costco. Uh, and each of those has five dollars of debt each so I'm going to put in my debt here so I owe five there All right. I owe five on this one and we're keeping the number small it's not always very likely that you're going to have uh, four credit cards and they all have five dollars each like one student said well, like, why don't you just put it on the same card um, for the purpose of keeping our examples uh, simple enough for us to kind of break down the concept. We're just using uh, regular manageable numbers. So, if I have four credit cards of five dollars debt each, what is going to be my total um, balance or total debt? Well, I owe five here, and then ten, and then fifteen, and then twenty. So my ending balance is that I all together I owe twenty dollars. Okay. Hence, 4 times 5 is 20. But we got to figure out whether or not this is going to be positive or negative. So let's translate the story. So I have 4 credit cards. So if I have those accounts, um, that's positive. I have them. So I have 4 groups, so it's a positive 4. And then we're going to multiply that by how many objects we have in each of those groups. Because I have $5 of debt each. Debt, as you know, is a negative, we represent that with negative integers. So in each of those accounts, I have a debt of $5 in each account. So that would be represented by 4 times negative 5. And we know that if we have accounts with debt, we're going to have an overall balance where we owe money. Hence, our answer is going to be negative 20. And notice, I didn't use any sign rules, we just used common sense. If I have a count of debt, then I owe money. Hence, my answer should be negative. Alright, so let's flip to the back page and finish up uh, the last page of the notes. Uh, we're going to look at some more specific examples to help you get an understanding of the different situations that you'll find when using multiplication. Um, simple multiplication is like when we do 6 times 4 or you see there with the 6 and the dot and the 4. We don't use the x anymore for multiplication in algebra because x is now a variable. It's been, uh, it's been promoted. It's up this game. So um, we're using the parentheses or the multiplication dot. Um, so let's translate these expressions here into stories. So 6 times 4 would be um, I have groups here, and I have six groups, so I'll represent that as I have six accounts. So I'm putting in I have six accounts, and I have uh, four dollars. Let's see, four dollars in each of those accounts. So I have six accounts with four dollars um, in each, which is if I have accounts with money in it. I'm going to have a positive balance. Right, a positive balance. And then a positive balance of how much? Well, six accounts of $4 each. So um, six times four, we know we're going to have $24. Okay? All right, so you don't have to be confused. If you have accounts with money, my answer is going to be a positive balance. Um, we say that because teachers will 
tell you this trick that uh, negative, negative and negative make a positive. So then logically the student assumes that a positive and positive must make a negative. They think it's some type of trick. Um, but when you stay within the context of real life, you understand that if you have accounts with a positive balance, overall you're going to have money and not to make the mistake of saying that you have a negative balance. Okay, so let's look at another example. Sometimes in real life um, we have accounts of debt, I meaning you have groups of negative values. So we have accounts of debt. For example, I have eight accounts of seven dollars debt each, which is going to be either going to be positive or negative. So if I have accounts of debt, all right, that's a bad thing. So that's going to be a negative balance, all right. And then you ask yourself a negative balance of how much. So you can actually draw out eight, say eight credit cards, seven dollars in each. Um, so if I owe on one card, all right, let's just draw them out. So one card is going to be seven dollars. Two cards that I owe fourteen dollars, and then twenty-one dollars, and then twenty-eight dollars, and then five cards is thirty-five dollars, all right, forty-two dollars, and then forty-nine dollars, and then eight accounts is now going to be $56 that we owe. So, you have a negative balance of $56. All right, and we know 8 times 7 gives us 56, but the question here is really we're t talking about the signs, because when we get the signs incorrect, then uh, that usually throws off the whole problem. And in real life, that Right, having negative is very different than having a positive balance. Right, you rather I'd rather have fifty six dollars than owe fifty six dollars. So the signs become very important. Um, so when we translate this into math, since you have eight accounts, that's going to be a positive eight. You have eight. You have eight groups, so that's a positive thing. But in each of those groups, you have seven dollars debt each, and debt is represented by a negative value, so negative 7. Alright, and if you think about it, if you have accounts with debt, that means you have a negative balance, you have more debt. So you owe $56, which would be negative 56. Okay? So just sum up that idea here, when I have accounts with debt, I will always owe money. Okay? So having accounts with debt, you owe money. Okay, until it gets paid off. So let's move on to the last two examples. Okay, so if the first example was I have accounts with money, that represented a positive times a positive. Uh, the second example was I had accounts of debt, so that's a positive times a negative. So now we're going to talk about what do we, what happens when we remove from accounts with money. Okay. So you have accounts and they already have money in them. Um, what is that when you remove that? And in class we talked about withdrawing uh, money from the ATM. Like you're, you have money in, the, in your account and then you remove it or take it out. And then how would we translate that? So the story here is I withdrew from four accounts, withdrew from four accounts, the amount of $10 each. So my total balance went blank by blank. So if you go to the ATM and you pull out, or you use your card and you pull out money $10 four times in a row, is your bank balance going to go up or down? Well, if you pull money out, then your money is going down. So the total balance went down, and then think about that. If you do that four times, how how much will your balance drop? So ten dollars, twenty dollars, thirty dollars, and it will drop by forty dollars. Okay? And again, you can do four times ten, but we're trying to get a, an understanding of how this relates to the real world and get, actually have a concrete um, comprehension of the of the of the math and not have everything be so abstract. Alright, so the total balance went down by $40. Um, we need to translate that. 
Now, since you withdrew from four accounts, we were removing, and we talked last week how removing is a negative thing, right? It's taking things out. So remove from four accounts, so negative four, and then you had money in each of those accounts. So you had um, you had, you had to have had the ten dollars in there in order to take it out. So we'll put a positive ten as your object. But what happened to your balance when you withdrew four times the amount of ten dollars each? Your balance went down. That means your overall change will be a negative change, and it'll be a negative change of forty dollars. So we had negative forty. So negative four times ten is negative forty. So when you remove from accounts with money, your balance will always go down, right? And that makes sense, right? We don't go to the ATM, pull out a hundred dollars, and then say, "Where's my hundred dollars at?" Well, you just you just took it out. So if you withdraw money, your balance will go down. So hence, removing groups of positive amounts will make things go down. So that's where we get the negative times the positive gives you a negative value, right? Because you're withdrawing, sorry, withdrawing a positive money, which makes your balance go down. All right. Uh, the last one is the one that confuses students the most. So you know, if you need to watch it over and over, do so. So the last story is every now and again we remove debt from accounts. Uh, this is called call this paying off your debt. So we're going to write that in, paying off your debt. So you had a negative thing, but you removed that negative thing. You had debt, but you removed it. Um, so it's a great thing. So you want to think of this as something positive. Um, so you paid off, so that's a removal, two credit card accounts that had $80 of debt each. And remember, it's a debt, so that makes it negative. So watch this. So I paid off. So remove two groups, paid them off. Um, $80 debt, and debt is negative, right? So I got negative 2 and negative 80. Now, if you're, you want to think about your credit card balance. So remember, credit card, you don't, you don't actually have that money. So whenever you pay it back, your credit card balance will go will go up, right? You use it, it goes down, but if you pay it off, then your balance will, will go back up. So if I'm paying off two credit cards that had $80 of debt each, that is a good thing for my credit. So my credit card balance will go up, right? And then you gotta ask yourself by how much. So you pay off one car, $80, boom, back on your car. Pay off another one. $80 back on that car. All together, how much is that? That is $160. All right? So you pay off your card, then your balance will go up. In this case, it will go up by $160. So in math, what does that look like? Well, I'm paying off two cars, so I'm, I'm removing those things that I, I previously owed. So that's going to be a negative two. I'm paying it off. I'm removing those two accounts that had debt. And the objects would be, in each of those accounts, I did have a debt of $80, right? So, but we know that in real life, if I'm paying off two accounts of $80 each, my balance is actually going to go back up by $160. So my answer is going to be positive 160 not negative 160. It was negative 160 when I owed it, right? 2 times negative 80 is negative 160. But since I'm paying it off, negative 2, um, the debt of $80 each, negative 80, hence we have my balance would go up by 160. So that's where they get that negative times a negative equals a positive. Well, that's an example of how we can show a negative times a negative equals a positive. And you should know reasons why that that actually occurs because honestly if you're just looking at that and we give you the sign rules and you're like well okay negative and negative make a positive that it makes no sense right you see two negatives why is that a positive now and if we don't know the reasons why um, it's one of you know one of the avenues as to how we get confused 
So when I see a kid make this mistake, and negative times a negative is a positive, so then the student says, well, positive times a positive must be a negative. That's a perfectly logical um, conclusion if someone tells me a negative and negative make a positive, well then yeah, I'm going to say a positive and positive must be a negative. Um, so if we don't give you guys any context, you'll make errors like that. But you know that if you have money or you have accounts with money, that's not going to mean you owe money. That means you have, you have more money. So we know a positive times a positive is always a positive. But here, a negative times a negative, we can make sense of it because we're paying off or removing a debt. And when you remove a debt to negatives, that um, is a good thing for you. Okay? So when I remove debt from accounts, my balance will always go up. All right? So those guys who missed the lesson or need a refresher, um, hopefully that helps. Um, that was two days worth of the lesson, um, so it's a little bit longer than the others. Uh, but hopefully it helps you. Remember, there's tutoring Mondays after school, and I will see you in the classroom. Peace out.